Ooh, 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 fun day at Mud Fossil University. I've been looking at this for years now. This dragon's eye, and I had no clue really too much about it. I just looked at it, and I originally thought it was just a stone tendon ball. However, I do believe it is a dragon's eye. And it, I got popped with a couple of hits this morning. This came from Christina. Uh, Kruger, I believe is her name, Christina Kruger, I believe it is. Anyway, she sent me this saying, you know, take a look, see what you think. So, let's take a look. I'm sorry, it's Christina Cooper. Uh, and this is, look at this very carefully. You see this, how squared that off that is? How amazingly squared off that is? And I have other shots of this from different perspectives. And a couple of guys just did a, a video about going in here. Now, look at these layers. You see the size of this thing? You know how many layers there are in here? There's a bazillion. I think that's a technical term. Okay, it's pretty obvious that this thing is coming down this way. And it's coming up to meet itself in a pinch here, which an eye does. And down here. Now, I don't have the best shots of this thing because I was never really that interested. I thought it was a tendon ball, and they are everywhere. Let me show you what I originally thought it was and why I now realize it is not what I thought it was. All right, you see this? This is what I thought it was originally, that big dragon's eye. But these are just stone balls, and these are tendon balls. They're all over the earth. I mean, just everywhere. And they are serviced by blood, and they erode sometimes just like that did and um, that's another erode. You see the top fell off over there? I mean they're all over the earth and everybody's oh what are these? We can't figure it out. Well I figured it out. They're tendon balls and that's what sometimes they have this and then they have the chert around the outside which you uh, then sometimes they'll take on a color of like copper or something which is in the area and they have like a surrounding shell but nothing like the the, the um, eyeballs and then they come in vast quantities here and there the moki marbles are unbelievable there's just bazillions of them and they're everywhere they're all over the earth and every day i see people saying oh what i wonder what they are they are tendon balls these are actually interstitial balls most of them these are interstitial balls when you see them in clay in the red white brown yellow clay that's skin it's literally skin, and that was the flesh of the people that they, or whoever it was that it was in. You see them in the ball? That's, that's the clay of somebody's body, or some creature's body. I'm not saying somebody. Right, here they are. They're washed up everywhere. I mean, they're literally everywhere because the earth is literally made of them is made of creatures. Now, again, that's another one of these balls, but there's nothing like the, the number of layers in the dragon eyes. All right, those guys got big balls. Let's see, here's a gigantic big ball. What's this? You see it right there? This is the kind of, and they're all over here, see them? Boom, 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 boom. That is filled with sand. Some of them are filled with sand. Some of them are filled with pockets of, they look like they could almost move a little bit against each other and still really, really retain solid. These, I, I don't know why they filled with sand, but there must have been something internally in there. Let's see what this one says. Uh, here's, a, here's another style. These are the kind that have, like, structural. I think that might be able to do a little of this and not completely destroy itself. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But it's some kind of a... What's this? Oh, this is Lee Simpson sent me a bunch of stuff. They look at these steps and they think somebody carved it. No, that's the blood supply coming into those, those little pockets. Here's another one Lee sent me. That's the pockets are inside. They erode sometimes. If there's salts, they do one thing. If there's acids, they do something else. That, I don't know what the hell is going on here. Somebody cut that, it looks like to me. A long, long time ago. Now, Lily Lavender sent me this. If you go up and look at Iapetus, the moon, it's identical. Absolutely identical. And even if you look down here, you can see where the cord came in to attach to that. Which all of these tendon balls have a cord. Uh, same thing, look, that's just like Iop Iopetus too. Uh, this is what's inside the Moki marbles. Now, these are 
a certain type of tendon ball. They call them concretions. They must have been in some kind of a, this uh, I believe is a magnetite or it might have some other metal characteristics to it, but you can see the exact separation. So the internal chemistry was way different. Right, these are in a different type of tissue, but still the same stuff. Right, this is, these are the stone balls, like we just saw a moment ago, and the strap comes right up through here. They're all over the place. This is skin. That is literally kaolin clay, a white person's skin. Brown is a brown person's skin. Red is a red person's skin. And you look up kaolin clay, they have the, all of those different colors. That's just a tendon ball and it opalized, which means it was in a different chemistry. And it, there's a thing called nucleophilic invasion. And whatever the chemistry is, locally it invades. If it can find stability in there. There's a stone ball, perfect. Now, this is one of those that has a different structure to it. They're all different for different places in the body where stress is this and that. Now, these, the Chinese, it looks like cut them and made plates out of them, um, you know, which is pretty cool. Uh, these here, I don't know what these are. I looked at these, but I can't figure what. I, they look like fruits or something, or seeds or nuts, or I don't know what the hell it is. But I don't, uh, all right, here's the Moki Marvels. You see that? This was skin right up about, like, say, this high above all this. And that, these were in that, and that's what's called the interstitium. When all of that eroded away and created this mud, the balls that were the anchors just all fell down. And this happens all over the Earth, everywhere, and on Mars. Right there, they are right there. They're on Mars. They call them the Mars blueberries. Right there. It's not something that's, you know, what are these doing everywhere? Not a single word from geology. They don't want to know anything about stuff they can't explain. There's a stalk right there coming out of one of those tendon balls. Right, there's a stalk right there. We cut them now and use them for whatever we're using for. Right, we're just cutting them up. Cutting up giants. Having they used to stack them up using the giants. Thank you there, big guy. Thank you. Nice job. Straight in a little to the left. <laughs> this I find hysterical. <laughs> this is the Stonehenge heel stone. <laughs> that means it's a foot. And you can see the you can see the blood supply in it and everything. You see the blood supply. That's a foot. That's a heel stone. Stonehenge is nothing but, but creatures. And I can prove this. It's not nothing I can't prove now. All they can do is run away, and boy, are they good at it. Let's see what else we got here. I don't know. I should just leave this alone. I'm sorry. I keep popping people. Well, that's always an interesting look. Uh, what do we got here? Stone slabs. They're doing a little cutting here and there. The creatures were so big, it's just unbelievable. It's just really, I mean, it really is incredible. And this is Japan. This didn't just happen here and there. All right, these are the hairs and the sweat glands. Here they are right there. You guys, that's a sweat gland. Oh, there's, oh, those are chipmunk pearls. This is like the bazillion of them. Every hair had one next to it. Just, they say these, these are just strange things. We have no idea what they were. You see, there they are right there. One right after the other. And then you can see the hairs going up through there, too. That, I don't know. That's, I, I believe, one of those... Um, tendon ball areas and there's some blood that was the area where the blood was coming in and it just sort of migrates around so there's a vein and an artery 
an artery brings the fresh blood down with all the nutrients, the oxygen, the dit, 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 and everybody gets a little, give me a little, like, give me a little, and it all takes it and lives nice, and everybody's happy, and the vein says, all right, I'll take what you guys don't want, and I'll go back and get some more stuff. And what happens is the metals, the colored things, the red, the blue, the green, the yellows, the oranges, all these different colors, and they are extremely brilliant when you see them. Well, let me just show you. Those are the things that move things, and they move them through your heart. All right, this is actually a very good shot. Now, this is the top of the eye, I believe, and it obviously comes running over this way and over this way. We saw all of the different layering of the lens or the cornea or whatever it was, and you can see there's an extreme difference between the types of tissue as you go deeper and deeper and deeper. Now, let's look at a little lower here, down where they are. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this, because you can, I, and I do too, I could jump over things, wow, well, look at that, and I go on. Well, if you take your time, you see things that are quite interesting. You see the, the texture and the curvature of the tissue here, and then you see this. It, it, there's no reason for that to be exactly blocky like that, except that it is part of the blockiness, first of all, of anatomy, but secondly, it is, I believe, one of the muscles that twisted that eye up and down or this way or that way. Now, secondly or thirdly or sixthly or whatever it is, look at this right here. <laughs> you see that? Can you see that? You look at this and you think, wow, they're really thin little layers because there's a bazillion of them, but look at this. They get to be almost paper thin. There's one right after the other. And I find this in my... Uh, hold on, I'm going to get something. Hold on. Okay, I got the microscope fired up. I got a ton of dragon samples right here. And I will show you, and you will not... Well, there's one right here. There's a dragon scale. That's a scale from a dragon. That locked it in right there. And, they, and that right up in here is the blood supply. And we're going to be looking at that in the microscope. You'll see it. And uh, I have a ton of different ones, and I'm going to show you how many layers, when you see how many layers of tissue is in these, I believe that that's another dragonish thing. Here's another one that we're going to be looking at in the microscope. You see how many layers there? You can't even believe. And that is biological. That's not just a bunch of sediment laying there. That's a biological sample. And this is a feather. <laughs> Well, I'll show you. I have people all over the world now contributing to Mud Fossil University. See that? That's the feather. It's just like a turkey feather. And here it is right here. I think that's exactly where he broke it off of, or right in that area somewhere. And I don't know. I can't really match it up. But it's that's what it is. That's the same damn thing. And that's a pretty thick feather. You know what I mean? They don't make them that way now. Now, I also have, as you saw, the dragon scales. I don't know, that's a different type of dragon. It doesn't have a feather. And, and we're going to be looking at them in the microscope. You see the actual blood where it infused in. Everything had to be serviced with blood. This is, again, a, so dense with layering. And then when you see the red and the black and the, so forth, that means there's blood there. That was blood. And I have my, all kinds of things. And here's a different, that's, that's just a bone. Uh, and this is a different type of, of scale. I don't know what that was on. But that's the tab that held that in. See that hook right there? So it hooked into something. And then it has that flute laid on another channel. And another one hooked in and hooked in. The same thing that this did. But on the upside down. I don't know. There are a lot of different dragonish looking things. On the ground, this is, and I want to want to show you in the microscope. You're going to see all of that layering. That's what dra gave the dragons their toughness. I don't know if you can see that. Well, you will in the microscope, but you can see, and that's what they see all around the earth. And they say, "Ooh, that's all sedimentation." No, it is not. Absolutely not. And I, I got so many things to go over. Yikes! That's all I can say. Okay, these are the things that move through your heart in little chunks, and they attach to other molecules using what's called a ligand. It's just a little snipper. It grabs a hold of it, brings it where it goes, and it says, you give me two, I'll give you two. Boop, done, case closed. And here's what they look like. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, what is it going to look for? 
All right, that's an opal eye, and it just happens to be that it was in the conditions that the aqueous transition metals attached, and, and you know, it's, there has to be an exact chemistry to make these things happen. But at least you can see the strap in the other in the eyeball. Now this is a heart, and this was the upper part of the heart, and this is, it was laying down like this. So this was low. That's why the transition metals, which are heavier, settled here more than up above, which is the red platelets just sort of lifted them not lifted up, but they're floated to the surface because these are heavier. Now you see all these different colors. This was in a condition. I believe this was from the um, Yoa region in um, Australia. Fabulous, fabulous opals. Now what that means is there was some chemistry here which created the right pH, the right transition metals were right in this area and um, they just invaded exactly the tissues that wanted them. That's why they're exact different colors in the exact different areas where tissue layers are. You see how this is all brown and so forth? This makes this color layer here. This is all this blue and all the heart strings running in are the same color. They have the same chemistry. They do the same job. They have different structural integrity. They have different responses. They have different molecules inside of them. And what it's doing here is going <laughs> taking this blood, pushing it through the heart, the lungs, the kidneys and all that stuff and and, and moving it through your body, bad one inside, good goes out the other side.